person. I run the Glace Bay Food Bank Community Garden. Uh, this is our seventh year that we've grown vegetables, flowers, pollinator plants. Uh, the big impact that we have here is to make sure that everybody has access to fresh vegetables and fruit. Uh, the reason why we started the garden, um, I've always gardened, my parents, grandparents, so on. And one day we had a seven-year-old boy in our garden and he didn't know what a green bean was. Had never seen one and he thought that carrots grew at the grocery store. So that really impacted me and I thought, what can I do for him? So what I did was I picked a bunch of beans, I got some other vegetables, I wrote a little note for his mom uh, just on how to cook them and we invited them for a meal. And then he started helping me. So I figured, what can I do for our community? I did more research and found out we had the second highest poverty rate in Canada. And I was very embarrassed. So what could I do to help the community where I live? Well, I know how to garden. I can teach and maybe grow a garden and have other people with me helping. And we can teach how to garden to improve. Um, so from there we looked into grants and we created the garden. Uh, it's taken a lot of volunteers, hard work. We've had the first year we did over 500 pounds of food and we split it up. We put it into the meal that we provide at the food bank Monday to Friday. We usually feed about 50 people per day and we always give out food hampers for families, single families, seniors, but they didn't have access to fresh vegetables. Now, when it first started, a lot of people didn't want the vegetables because they haven't eaten them or know how to cook with them. Then it got even more deep because we realized these people couldn't afford vegetables. It was easier to get packaged processed food. So then we started incorporating all these vegetables into the meal that we provide and teaching the clients how to make these, how to harvest, save seeds, and so on. So it's really blown up and it's created a big community of growing. We provide flowers, transplants, seeds, even soil containers for clients and general public and now we have all these clients that have their own gardens and they now give back to the food bank the extra food and they don't rely on the food bank as much. So it's kind of like teaching a person how to fish instead of giving them a fish. They can eat forever, just like gardening. So we've had a few funny circumstances with animals in the garden over the past few years. I did have a run in with the raccoon now, he wasn't necessarily stealing food, but he would take the ripe tomatoes right off the vine, take a bite, and leave it. And we were getting ready to harvest everything to make pickles, jam, salsa, spaghetti sauce for the winter. I left my hat accidentally in the garden on a chair. I came back the next day. The raccoon had dragged my hat through the mud. It must have been through three rows and then he dragged his muddy paws all over my hat. This week we've been fighting with a mouse. He continues. I didn't know if it was a mouse mole or what we were dealing with, but he keeps building a little home every night in one of the gardening boxes, and it's where we have all the pumpkins and gourds growing. He's so cute, and it's just heartbreaking for me to put some cayenne pepper where he's going to be putting the hole. But I have to think about food, and feeding the people, so we'll see what happens there. Why does a duck have tail feathers? I don't Why know. Why does duck quack? <laughs> <laughs>